the another idea is that if you have these small cells, one of the advantage that you can get is essentially use a, a micro concentrator. So instead of having these big cell, big you know lenses or big big Fresnel lenses or these big discs, you just take a plastic and you know why not just take a plastic, a dew point plastic, and just pattern it like this, right? So you make this, you know, these these bubble kind of plastics and that would be a decent concentrator to give you, you know, 2x concentration or 3x concentration. Right? So that that's idea is called micro concentrator and then again there are many startups which are uh, trying to leverage uh, this micro concentrator idea. The thing you need is you need thousands of these uh, miniature cells. So something, this sliver kind of approach, it works very well with this uh, micro concentrator. But the problem with sliver was essentially that you know you were never able to uh, get uh, uh, very high efficiency. So this is a Bay Area company which is you know again using micro concentrator. And what it says is instead of having one panel, we take the same cell and make two panels. It says you know we use half the half the area, so we cut our cells into these. They don't cut into these micron size slivers, but they convert into these centimeter size uh, strips. So these are still, uh, you know, these are still made uh, the conventional way. So it's still light shining from the top. But you have these small, small slices. And then you place this DuPont sheet, this plastic sheet on the top, which gives you a concentration of 2x. And since your VOC is essentially, it goes as a log of, uh, uh, as a log of your concentration, right? You get increase in your VOC and you get increase in your efficiency. So you'll get a much larger panel, but you'll get a more efficient panel, right? So you'll get, in the same, you'll need twice the amount of space, but if you're going on a utility scale, you know, you'll still get more higher efficiency. So you'll check them out. They are still not bankrupt. They're still alive, you know, pretty much alive, located in the Bay Area. Now here's an even more radical approach, right? So. The cost involved is, uh, you know, one of the largest cost and one of the largest energy consumption is involved in making the wafers, right? Making these silicon wafers. So we melt our crucibles, you know, we form these molten silicon, we pull out that crystal, and then you chop it off into these thin wafers, right? So why bother, you know, let's, you know, why not essentially take this, uh, take the right? And uh, instead of making wafers out of them, just break, you know, just, you know, essentially let the droplets fall out, right? And just make, collect these balls of silicon, right? Take, like, take a basket and make, collect these balls of silicon, right? And now place that basket into a diffusion furnace and you'll form a PN junction, right? You essentially take these balls, place them, uh, in a diffusion furnace, you form this uh, PN junction, right? And then you chop off these balls, so you get this P-type contact over here, right? And make these PNN contacts, you know, you chop off that one region. And hey, I have a solar cell, right? And guess what? It works very well with the uh, concentrated light because, you know, I can, again, buy these corrugated plastic, right? Corrugated pieces of plastic, almost, you know, the things you you make your uh, cupcakes, you bake your cupcakes in, right? Or, you know, you bake these small candies, you know, small little, little candies, they have these corrugated silver things in it, right? And, like, just the way I place candies, I'll place, you know, one of these balls in each of them. And, you know, guess what, you know, this can give, this easily gives, like, a concentration of 2 to 3x, right? This, this 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 candy kind of a concentrator can give me two to three x concentration and it doesn't require tracking right what a neat idea it sounds reasonable why I can make like small micron size balls. That's not very hard to do. 
Right. It's not very hard to dope them as well. This prior part might be uh, this part might be hard where I uh, you know try to essentially grind them and then you know make contacts to them. But technically, it sounds okay. The, I mean, the only concern would be to get the price point right. But otherwise, it, it sounds quite reasonable. Requires no tracking. Right? So I mean, there most of the things you you know you can sound like a neat idea. There was there's a company. This is based out uh, in Boston, close to. Uh, uh, and over, you know, north of Boston, they're trying to pursue this idea. I don't know what their price point is because you know, nowadays solar panels are almost free. So, but anyway, sounds like a neat idea. Right? So this is. Uh, let me see. So this is uh, where most people who design concentrator for uh, silicon. They try to design it for a range of uh, 2x, 5x kind of uh, range. If you want to go beyond that, you need more complex optics, or you know, you need. Uh, uh, if you're using a silicon-based cell, it does not have the efficiency, or you know, the efficiency gain only makes sense if you are operating in this range. That is, if you're using concentration of 2x, 5x. If you want to go beyond that, then you must use a 3-5 cell. And if you have a 3.5 cell and you are using a concentration of 5x, again it does not make economic sense because the cell is so expensive. So if you are using a 3.5 cell, you need a concentration of, you know, you want a concentration at least of 100x or 300x to make it economically feasible to use such a high, uh, such a high price cell or such an expensive cell. So you, you have often this value of death in terms of concentration. So people either make concentrators, concentrators which are 2x, 3x, or 5x, or they make ones which are more than 100x. In between, you know, there's not uh, silicon does not make sense to go go above efficient above concentration of 10x. Similarly, 3.5 cells they don't make cells to go below concentration of 100x. Okay. see if I can go a few minutes. So here's a question I had posed you earlier, right? That remember I had this neat idea of making these uh, multi-junction cells just by you know making p-type material in larger band gap and n-type material in lower band gap. But you guys rejected that idea, right? You said that we will use, uh, we will lose energies here. It would be hard to collect these holes because they'll see this barrier. Right, but how about if I make this a quantum well? So I make you know quantum well like this. You think this is a neat idea? So I'll make a LED instead of a solar cell. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> so what, what what do I need to do to get the? So you're right. You know, I'll get a lot of recombination somehow. You know, since this this band gap is like this, right? So I'll get a lot of recombination. What would that do? So it will make it like this, right? Okay. So is is this a good solar cell? What do you think, JP? Well, you know, whatever electrons will essentially jump out from here, holes will jump out from here. 
because there's such a high feed, right? So usually they had this whole barrier. Now they have a small barrier to jump across. Uh, why do you lower bind gap at the first place, right? So you want to absorb more of the spectrum, right? So if I use just one material, I, use, I lose all the spectrum which is at the bind gap below of it. So one way is to use two different junctions, right? Or the other way is to you know, insert this quantum well which is of a lower bind gap material in between. So, you know, in terms of VOC uh, or JSC, what would happen? If I say just had this one large bind gap versus if I have this quantum well, would my uh, VOC go up or go down? Or either of these things, would my JSC go up or go down? Yeah. Jesse will go up, why? Okay, so I'm absorbing more photons, right? So JSC goes up. What about VOC? VOC goes down, right? Because I have, in a conventional multi-junction cell, the VOC increases because I have two junctions and they add up in parallel, right? But over here, I've, what I've done is essentially I have only one material. So, I mean, I'm only one cell. I have only two terminals to it. I've effectively reduced its band gap, right? So you think like if two of these things, so if, you, if you think in terms of your quasi-Fermi level, right, those who have semiconductor background, they will lie somewhere in between, you know, between the band of these two. So your VOC goes down as compared to a larger band gap material. Your JSC increases 